In this video, I'm going to prove to you that the coefficient of static friction on an inclined plane is equal to tangent of theta of the angle. And um, the other day, a student was doing a lab, and they were trying to figure out the coefficient of static friction on an incline. And I basically told them, I said, that's very simple. The coefficient of static friction is simply equal to the tangent of theta. And the student kind of looked at me like I was kind of from another planet. But it, it is. It's equal to the tangent of theta of an inclined plane. And I'm going to prove that to you right now. It's very simple proof to do. It's not that difficult. So let me just flip this around here, left to right. There we go. So here's an inclined plane. And let's just get started here. Let's define our uh, variables of our system here. So this is our inclined plane. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an object and I'm going to place it on this inclined plane. And there's going to be friction. So my inclined plane is going to have some angle here of theta, okay, theta here. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to take a box. I'm just going to do a very simple, whoops, that's not a box. I'm going to do a box, and I'm going to just put it on here to represent a mass. So we'll spin that around here just a little bit. Okay, so here's a mass just like this. And that mass is on an inclined plane. And um, it's not sliding on that inclined plane. There's friction that's going to keep it from sliding. So what I want to do here is I'm going to give this a little bit of color here on properties. I'm going to make these uh, just a fill so you can see them. I'm going to make this like a yellow here. And I'm going to make this basically, let's make this like, I don't know, let's just make this like a light green maybe, something like that. And I'm going to put in the middle here. I'm going to fill that center of mass just so we can see that I have a center of mass there. And we're going to draw all the forces acting on this object. Uh, but be before we do that, I always talk to you about defining your axis on an inclined plane. Uh, so let's do that now. So the general direction of motion of this box, if it slid on its own, would basically go in that direction. would go down the plane like this. So I'm going to define an axis. Now normally my axis, if the ground is down here, right, I might just show this down here. If the ground is down here like this, usually I put my axis along the ground like this, right? And usually I might have the x going the other way. But in this case, the actual path of motion is where? It's down the inclined plane, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that axis and I'm just going to kind of tilt it a little bit like this and I'm going to show you that that is going to be my positive x direction. Now in this problem it's not even really going to matter too much uh, simply because um, I, you know I'm just finding a, it's, it's a statics problem there's no uh, there's no net force if there was a net force that's the direction it would slide but when we do an inclined plane I always want you to set up that axis tilted down like that. So when we start with a free body diagram the first force that I always like to draw here is the force of gravity which goes straight down like this. And so we can also label that <coughs> with our blue marker here. I can come up here with FG and I can just call it FG just like this. That's my force of gravity acting straight down. So we should always draw that first. It's very dependable. We can depend upon it to always be straight down. So the next force I'm going to draw here is going to be the normal. And the normal is going to be perpendicular to the surface, and it's going to be just like this. Now the normal should equal this component of gravity in the y direction. So if I come down like this, I can just make sure that arrow is the correct size it is. I can come up here like this. And I can go ahead and I can just draw right in there. I can draw force normal just like that. Draw a little arrow across like that to show there's my force. And so finally, I can take my force of friction, and I can show that it's going to keep us from sliding down the inclined plane. And again, it's got to be along the surface here. Technically, it is along the surface, but we're going to draw it at the center of mass. And again, that force of friction, just to make sure it's the right size, it should be relatively equal to this x component of the gravity. It's going to keep us from sliding down. There you go. So now I'm just checking the proportions of these arrows, right? And so I'm going to go ahead and fill that in now. So that's the force of friction going against, you know, the the, mode, the direction it would want to go on its own. So what type of a situation do we have here in terms of Newton's laws? What do we have here? We have the first law or the second law. What do we have going on here? Well, we actually have an application of the first law, Newton's first law. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to set these up over here and I'm going to write Newton's first law out here. So we are going to have the basic application of Newton's first law. Okay, so the Newton's first law says an object in motion stays in motion or an object at rest stays at rest unless the net force acts upon it. So this, the sum of the forces equals zero. So again, this is the first law. Okay, first law application. Very simple stuff here. So the sum of the force equals zero, but we also can break that up into the sum of the forces in the x and the sum of the forces in the y. So I can look over here, I can break it over here. I can look over here, I can break it over here. Okay, I can show both of these true in each dimension there. Okay, so for example, I'm going to be able to say here the sum of the forces x equals zero and the sum of the forces y equals zero. Okay, so if I have my sum of my forces equals zero and the x equals zero and the y equals zero, that's the first law, right? So I have to break my forces up into components here, okay? That's the first thing we have to do on this diagram because I have my, new, my force normal is in the y and my force of friction is along the x. But my gravity's got a little bit of both, right? So let's write out the components of gravity here. Okay, so I can break up the force of gravity with these dashed lines here. I can draw out the components of this force, okay? So this, this force right here is simply going to be Fg cosine theta. Or this component here. And this component right here is simply going to be Fg sine of theta. Okay. Once I write those out, this is no longer in effect here. I have to delete those from the picture here. Okay. I have to get rid of this one too from the picture because now that I've written out my components, um, this is all that we're dealing with now. Okay. So it's pretty simple. When we're dealing with the first law in the in the x, we can really uh, take a nice little shortcut here, which is the following. We know that all the forces on the left equal all the forces on the right, and all the forces up equal all the forces down. So this is really a balanced situation. So when I have the sum of the forces in the x, I can basically take a nice shortcut. I can basically say everything on the left equals everything to the right. And when I'm doing the sum of the forces in the y, I can basically say everything up equals everything down in terms of the forces. So it's a nice shortcut. It's pretty quick. And that's only works with the first law, by the way. The second law, you can't really do that. So what's the left and what's the right? Well, let's take a look here at our diagram here. I know that, um, just to clarify here, that the force of gravity is mg. So this is really mg cosine theta. And the force of gravity here, I'm just going to write mg sine theta. OK. And um, so basically, I'm almost ready to go here. The, we, the force of friction is one of our short formulas, so we, we know that the force of friction is mu times the normal. Okay, mu times the normal. I'm just kind of setting everything up on the free body diagram here, okay? So we have mg cosine theta, mg sine theta, force normal, and mu fn. So whatever's on the left equals whatever's on the right. So what's on the left? Well, we have mg, which I'm just going to do these all in black now here. We have mg sine theta. And what's on the right here? The force of friction, which was mu times the normal, right? Okay. So mu times the normal. Okay. And what's, when we say the ups equal the downs, we're going to say the force normal equals mg cosine theta. So we're going to say the force normal equals mg cosine theta. Okay, so I'm going to call this equation 1 and I'm going to call this equation 2. Okay, so I can also just rewrite equation 1 like this. I can basically say mu times f of n. I'm just going to flip this around a little bit here to say equals mg sine theta. Nothing really changed, okay? I just rewrote it like that. So now we're going to do something very quick here. I'm going to show you how to divide equations. I bet you didn't know you could do that. Yes, you can do it. We're going to take a, it's totally legal. We're going to take equation 1 divided by equation 2, okay? So here's what we're going to get. This is really cool. Watch this. So mu times the normal equals mg sine theta. And on the bottom, I can basically say f of n, which is equation 2, 
equals mg cosine theta. And a lot of really interesting things start to happen here. I'm going to take out my red pen here. Notice the mg's cancel out. Notice the force normals cancel out. So what am I left with now? Well, I'm left with mu, coefficient of static friction, equals sine theta over cosine theta. And that simply equals what? That just simply equals tangent of theta. So right there, I just proved to you that the coefficient of static friction on an inclined plane is equal to tangent of theta. So it's a very simple uh, proof to do, and it's a nice exercise to go through to teach you how to derive the coefficient of static friction on an inclined plane for an object. Thanks for watching.